Today's paper is VIC Reg, Variance, Invariance, Covariance Regularization for Self-Supervised Learning. In the field of self-supervised learning, researchers try to maximize the information captured in the output embedding vectors from different views of the same image. The authors in the paper uses a simple regularization term to avoid the collapse problem in training the network. Three principles are introduced to achieve this, um, variance, invariance, and covariance. The variance term is combined with the decorrelation mechanism based on the redundancy reduction and covariance regularization. The final result is on par with the other state-of-the-art methods. The architecture used in the paper is simple. It uses symmetric networks composed of an encoder and a projector. Given an image as an input, the encoder is in charge of making final representations Y, this is shown in the figure here, and the projector is in charge of mapping the representation to the embedding space Z. Now, the loss is then applied to the two vectors Z. The main idea is to take an image, apply two different transformation. In the paper, authors state they use random crop followed by color distor distortion, and feed each distorted image into the different networks. And they obtain projected embedded matrix Z, and they let each vector capture a rich form of representation in vector Z while letting the two vectors become close to each other. To achieve this, three principles are used. These are variance, invariance, and covariance. The variance and covariance principle is in charge of avoiding the collapse problem while the invariance principle is in charge of making two output embedding vectors similar. The variance loss term, which in later will be introduced in detail, con constrains the variance of embedded vector along each dimension independently. The invariance term makes the embedding from different image view close to each other, and the covariance term prevents the network encodes similar information of the same dimension in the embedded space. Now, let's see in detail how the loss function is formed for each principle. First, the variance principle constrains the variance of the embedding vector along each dimension independently. By doing this, the embeddings are encouraged to be different from each other without any direct comparisons. The loss term used for variance is a hinge loss on standard deviation of the projections along the batch dimension. The gamma in the equation, shown right here, is the target value for standard deviation, and the authors set this to 1 for the experiments. The var of x is the unbiased variance estimator, and this is calculated using the equation shown right here. This enforces the variance within the current batch to be gamma along each dimension, preventing the inputs to be mapped to the same vector. Next, the invariance principle is in charge of making the embeddings from different images um, close to each other. To achieve this, the model uses a standard Euclidean distance between the embedding vectors to minimize the distance. The equation shows the mean squared distance between, the, be, between each pair of vectors Z and Z prime. Note that Z and Z prime are not normalized either by standard deviation or by projection on the unit sphere. Lastly, the covariance principle idea is borrowed from the paper called the Barlow Twins. The objective in the Barlow Twins is in making the cross-correlation matrix to the identity matrix. To achieve this, the method decorrelates different dimensions of the learned representations by trying to make non-diagonal values of the cross-correlation matrix to zero. In the paper as well, this paper, covariance matrix of Z is first formed by using the highlighted equation. Um, then the covariance regularization term in the next equation right here is used to force off-diagonal coefficients to be close to zero. This prevents the network encodes similar information to the same dimension in the embedded space. Now, in the experiment section, the authors take ResNet 50 as a backbone architecture and first train the network on ImageNet 2012 dataset. During this training, 
note that no labels are used. Um, once the backbone is trained using the lost terms discussed earlier, the projector that maps to the embedding space is removed and a linear classifier head is added on top of the frozen representations of the ResNet50 backbone. The table here shows the result of the network under the supervised classification task and the semi-supervised classification task. Looking at the left section, the performance of VIC reg is on par with other state-of-the-art methods like SIMCLR, SWAV, and BYOL. Also, um, on the right side, it's the performance of the model on a semi-supervised classification task. Um, using 1% of the training data set, um, it achieves 54.8%, and compared to Barlow Twins, which is 55.0, um, its the, its performance is um, comparable, and also um, looking at the top five accuracy um, when using one percent of the training data, it achieves seventy nine point four percent, and this is higher than other methods um, like BYOL or SWAB. Now, the trained VIC reg model not only works well on the classification task, but it also works well on various downstream tasks like um, um, object detection and segmentation tasks. Um, this table um, shows the performance of the model on object detection when using faster RCNN. And um, looking at the score here, it achieves 82.4% on VIC 2007 and 2012 dataset. And also, it achieves 39.4% on COCO detection set as well. And on instance segmentation task, the model achieves an average precision score of 36.4 when using mask or CNN with FPN backbone. Link to the paper and some useful resources will be provided in the description. That's all for today, and I will see you next time with a new paper.